And we saw yesterday that he was betrayed by his own people, the Jews, the leaders. And they were passionately pushing to accuse Jesus before Pilate. And Jesus, he still proclaimed himself as the Son of God for it to be a message to them for some later time. We find the Jews did not want to acknowledge this fact of Jesus being the Son of God because it meant that they would have to let go of their kingship of their lives if Jesus were truly the Son of God. In today's story, we see the verdict of this trial of Jesus. We find Pilate summoning the Jewish leaders and the people to come hear what his conclusion is. He refers to the trial not only by him, he tested Jesus, but, he, but also King Herod tested Jesus. And they both came out to be negative. They couldn't find anything against Jesus. Jesus was not a criminal. They couldn't find any reason to kill Jesus. But And it seemed like this court was coming to an end, that everything would be finished. But then the Jewish people, especially the leaders, they suggested something very different, a different approach to this trial. Before they had accused Jesus of stirring up trouble in all over the country, the Palestine, Palestinian region. But now they changed their tactic and they appealed to their own emotions. They, it was in effect saying that, we don't care really about the fact, we just don't like this guy. We want to kill this guy. It was a passionate plea. And they grew even louder, called out louder, crucify, crucify him. It was an act of passion. They hated Jesus so much here, not just here. Now, in order for them to make sense, for it to be made sense to Pilate, they suggested something. Oh, Pilate, let's do this. There's this well-known criminal, his name is Barabbas, and you're holding him prisoner. And uh, he stole from our people and he killed many people. He's a murderer. So he's uh, supposed to die. He's going to be sentenced to death. But instead of killing Barabbas, let's release Barabbas and kill Jesus for the crime of Barabbas. This was the logic that the people, the Jews were proposing for Pilate. It's, it's like this, you know, you, let's say you get caught by a police officer as you are driving and the police pulls you over and tells you, you've been speeding, you've committed a crime, but it's obvious to you that you did not commit the crime. And you can explain to the officer that you are not speeding. But then the officer changes his tone and says, his argument and says, whatever, you know, I still don't like you. Let's do this. I'm going to write you a, I, I, I'm going to write you a ticket, but this ticket was for somebody else. I'm going to scratch their name and put your name on it instead. This makes you the criminal. How do you feel about this? It's nonsense. It's crazy. That's what's going on here in Pilate's court. At the end, because of the cry, the, the passion, the emotion of the Jews, Pilate gives in and he ends up releasing Barabbas, the criminal, the murderer, and setting Jesus to go to, to be crucified on the cross. Even if uh, you are not a religious person, just as a reasonable man or woman who's been educated, we know that this is a, a stupid court. It is a foolish court. It doesn't make sense. It's like a, a kangaroo trial, a kangaroo court, something that might happen in a communist 
uh, setting, communist people's court setting, right? One asks this question, why did the Jews push Jesus to this illogical trial and come to this illogical conclusion? It was proclaimed as a fact that Jesus was innocent. He was not guilty. And even Pilate, the authority of the land, who was a secular guy, Roman, Roman governor, refused to make a sentence uh, for Jesus. Still, the Jews were stubborn. They wanted to push for without reason, just if, with their emotions. They were emotional. For you and I who are logical and reasonable, this does not make sense. How do we make of this? What do we make of this? How can we comprehend what's going on here? We cannot make sense with a reasonable thinking here because they're not thinking reasonably. We must look at it through the lens of spiritual eyes. And in fact, Paul, the Apostle Paul, explains this fact to us, how this is possible. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says, in their, in their case, the God of this world, which is Satan, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. It says, the God of this age, Satan, has blinded the mind of the unbelievers. This word blinded me, literally means to remove. Satan has removed logic and understanding from the mind of people back then and people today as well. What happens if uh, reason, logic, sense is removed from your mind? You become crazy, right? You become unreasonable. You cannot be um, persuaded with logic and reason. That's what happened to these Jews. That's what happens to the people who refuse Jesus. One of those people who had this clouded judgment spiritually was uh, the famous author and, and journalist Lee Strobel. You know, he was an atheist. And his wife became a Christian, and so he had to investigate the, the truthfulness of Christianity. He wanted to know if Jesus really was the Son of God. He wanted to investigate the validity of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And at the end, he did come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ indeed is the Son of God after investigating for himself. This is what he says um, in an interview, Lee Strobel. He says, I spent two years looking at the evidence and in light of what I consider to be an avalanche of evidence that points to powerfully toward the truth of Christianity, I came to the conclusion that it would take more faith to maintain my atheism than to become a Christian. His eyes were opened as we were investigating. He realized that he was so blinded to the obvious fact. There's an avalanche of evidence that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Only the Son of God can do these things. And he came to the conclusion, I cannot but believe Jesus as the Son of God. It makes more sense, he's saying, to believe that Jesus, in fact, died and resurrected for our sins. The amazing fact is Jesus knew this too. Jesus knew that his people, the Jews, were acting in ignorance. And that's why in tomorrow's passage on the cross, we find Jesus praying this prayer, verse 34. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they do not know what they do. The kangaroo trial, the kangaroo court was possible because they were blinded spiritually. They did not know what they were doing, despite all the facts. And the amazing part of this cross is Jesus forgave them while they were still ignorant. 
Now, Apostle Peter, later on, when he becomes an apostle, he preaches upon this fact. He, in fact, accuses the Jew of killing Jesus. In Acts chapter 3, verse 17, this is what he says about these Jews. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. Verse 19, Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out. Jesus knew of their ignorance and forgave them. Peter also knows of their spiritual ignorance, and he's saying now, then, that Jesus has revealed himself as the Son of God through the cross and the resurrection. Now, it's not too late. Turn back. You did this in ignorance, but now turn back to Jesus and be forgiven. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage us all to do the same. Let's turn back to Jesus. Amen. Isn't there a heart inside of us a stupid heart, a heart of stupidity that rejects Jesus. We confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but in our actions, in our heart, we push Him away like we did yesterday. We didn't intentionally persecute Jesus, but out of our ignorance, spiritual blindedness, we sin secretly. We Betray the heart of our Lord. Let's pray tonight that God would forgive our sins of ignorance. We didn't mean it, but we've done it. Maybe there's a kangaroo court in our house, in our hearts. It's not just it's not thinking, it's not logical, but we just like to sin. We love to sin. Let's pray to our Lord Jesus. Ask him for forgiveness, and we know he already has. But let's pray for forgiveness, that Jesus would forgive our sins of ignorance, of rejecting Him, and once again, have Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Let's turn to Jesus once again tonight. Pray with me. Father God, we thank You that Jesus is so forgiving. He knew that the Jews were acting in ignorance, and He knows that we act in ignorance every day and Jesus you have already forgiven us and as a response we say we are sorry we have committed sin against Jesus as we claim lordship of our own lives we for we ask for your forgiveness Jesus we turn, we turn back to you oh Jesus come into our hearts once again and be our Lord help us to overcome these sins of ignorance and of pushing you away in our lives, even if it's emotional, Father God. Bless us this holy night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.